And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're talking about Istanbul, the just won the Kenner Spiel des Jahres, uh, the advanced strategy game in Germany, and so I was very interested. I don't know a lot about Istanbul other than it was once called Constantinople. Why it changed, no one knows. But um, this is a game about collecting rubies, and it has a whole lot of pieces and a lot of workers. It's a definitive Euro-style game. Should it have one game of the year? Let's explore that. <laughs> Setup is made up of many different boards. There's 16 of them, and there they, you can play a random setup. But the the game also has very specific setups. If you look here on each of them, there are some numbers. The big numbers used for um, purposes during the game, but each number is used to set up a specific type of game. The middle number, for example, is used to set up like a beginner, basic game where where the locations are closer to where you need them to be. The first number, and this is the way I have this board set up, is for the maybe the expert game. And then you could even use the third number. So you can use these numbers, and they're actually not a bad way to set the game up. Or you can just basically randomly put the game any way you'd like it to be. Now, what a player is going to do on their turn is you have a stack of assistants underneath one merchant. The merchant's the guy with the sticker. Underneath him, you have four assistants that you're going to be moving around the board. On your turn, you're going to move one or two spaces. When you get to a new space, you're going to leave one of your assistants at that space. Then on the next turn, maybe go to another space, leave an assistant there. If you go to a spot where there already was an assistant, you pick him up. If you ever get to a spot and as you're moving and you go and there's no more, there's no assistant there and you can't leave one, your turn ends. So you need assistance to be able to do anything. Each spot that you go to gives you a special ability that you can use if you drop an assistant off there. And the fountain, which is where you start, if you go there, you can call all your assistants back to you at that point in time. Now if you move into a spot where there's another merchant, you have to pay them two lira, the money source in this game. Yeah, and if there's multiples, you have to pay each of them two lira. You do that in every spot on the board if you want to use the action except for the fountain. The home basically is a safe place. If you run into uh, this gentleman here, and, or if you run into the smuggler, okay, you have the, the governor is the purple one, and the smuggler is over here, the black disc, um, you can pay them money to do different things. Here you can get a, a card, and up there, the, the smuggler, you can get a resource of your choice. You then roll dice to relocate them. Each person also has a family member here. And these are criminal family members. If you go to the police station, you can send your family member somewhere and use the action of that space. However, if someone else runs into your family member, they can send them back to prison and get rewarded for doing that. And then you can go back to the police station and free them all over again. Now, the goal of this game is to get rubies. And you'll notice that there's multiple rubies in different spots on the board. The first person to get five rubies, or six in a two-player game, is going to win. Here's one of, there's a few ways to get them. Let me explain that. Here at the gemstone dealer, you can buy a ruby for Lyra. The first ruby is 12, and there's a certain number of rubies placed on this track depending on the number of players. And you can see that once that one's bought, the next ruby is 13, then 14, then 15. So as the game progresses, rubies get more expensive. You can also get rubies here at the Great Mosque. If you build both of these buildings, each cost two resources, then they go up to three for the next player and four. So if you build both buildings, you get a ruby. And down here at the small mosque, you can do the same thing. If you build both of these buildings, they give you a ruby. Building these buildings also gives you special abilities, um, and we'll talk a little bit about them later on. Then down here at the Sultan's Palace, you can buy rubies, but this time instead of using money, you use resources. Here you would use one blue, one red, one green, and one yellow to buy this ruby. Once you buy that, one of each, and then one of your choice to buy the next one. Then two blues or red, green, yellow, and one of your choice. So you can see here's another spot where they're going to get uh, more expensive as time goes by. A spot you can go to is the Wainwright. And in the Wainwright, you can 
work on your backpack. So let's take a look at your backpack. Players have a backpack here that they start with. This is where you're going to keep your rubies as you get them. But also, you keep track of your resources. So if I get two of the, the jewels, I would just move that over too. Now my maximum is two, but if I go to the Wainwright, I can buy for seven lira more sections so I can have more resources as time goes by. If I buy the last, the third one of these to fill it all the way up, then I get a ruby from the Wainwright. So those are different ways to get rubies is by getting resources and by getting money and utilizing them. Now the way to get resources, there's several spots in the board where you get resources. In the spice warehouse where you get the green resources. You simply increase your green resources to the max. So you do that. So if I had my whole backpack filled like this, or my whole wagon filled, I just move it all the way over. If I only had, if I had fewer spots available in here, then I would only move it over three in this instant here. So, the, like I said, going to these spots, you can get a lot of resources. So there's several of those places on the board. You can get a variety of resources at the post office. Here I would get a green resource, a yellow resource, and two lira. Once I do that, I would move this down. The next person would get a red, a yellow, and two lira. The next person would get a red, yellow, and three lira. The next person would get a red, a blue, and three lira. The next person would get a red, blue, and four lira, and then everything would be reset. A place to get money is down here at the tea house. This is a gambling place. You roll two dice, you say what number, any number you want. If you get that number or higher, you will get the amount of, you, you'll get that much money, the number you spoke. Otherwise, if you get lower than the number you said, you will only get two lira. But at least you leave with something. You can go to the, uh, over here, the canvas area. Uh, where you can get special cards. Each player will start the game with these bonus cards and they can play them on their turn. Sometimes they give you uh, five, just here's five lira. Sometimes they let you get a resource of your choice. Sometimes instead of moving one or two spaces, you can stay in the same spot that you are and do that one again. Sometimes they let you grab one of your assistants and pull him back to your stack. The black markets where you get blue resources, they're the hardest ones to get. You can get one resource of your choice and you roll two dice and if you get a seven or higher you'll get one two or three blue resources so these are different various spots that are around the game oh i just forgot the markets the markets give you a lot of money at the market here if i turn in resources that are shown in this card let's say i have two greens and a yellow well that's three resources and i will get nine lira once i do that the market will change if i had all five of them i'll get 20 lira there's another market over here, the large market, that does the same thing, but it's, it often needs more of the blue resources, which are rare. So that's pretty much the game. It's going to continue as players take turn after turn until one person gets enough rubies. Uh, I mentioned these special tiles. If you buy this one here, you will get a fifth assistant that is set to the side of the board and he'll be added to your stack. So. That's a good way to get extra ones. Um, if you get this assistant on your turn, you can pay two lira to pull one of your assistants back. If you buy this tile, you can always, when you're rolling a dice for one of the two spots, you can always change one of them to a four. And if you do this one, every time you get resources from one of the resource spots, you can also pay two lira to get a resource of your choice. And that's how you play. One of the things I like about this game is the different setups that are in it when you play it. And I, I was able to play with all three of the different setups. Uh, and I think I like the, the expert one the, the best because you actually have to travel around. And, and, and the basic one, it's an easy one. And it's a good one to get started. You can kind of go bum, 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 really close. And the expert one, you have to kind of figure out what you're doing. There's different strategies. To get five rubies, you could get a lot of money and just start going and buying them. But how do you get money? Do you get goods and change that to money? Do you go gamble? Um, do you, uh, when do you use your bonus cards? This game uh, has a lot of cool things. The variable setups one. The movement is an interesting, uh, unique thing to do. You can go to one spot and make someone else pay you because they also want to use that spot. You can get your family members send them to a spot and they can use that without paying someone who's there. I still get a, a chuckle out of the fact that your one family member on the board is a criminal. It's that cousin you know, that no one talks about, the black sheep of the family. 
The artwork is very well done, and this is a very solid game. I really enjoyed it. One of the games this really reminded me of is a, a game I've always enjoyed, Blue Moon City. In that game, you moved around using cards to collect resources to come back and build something. This had a similar feel. In essence, this is a race game because you're trying to be the first to get something done. It's not get the most points, but be the first to build um, the five rubies. And I, I enjoy that. And even the six rubies, it, that was a very interesting game playing uh, a two-player version of this. So far, I found that this is a, a, a two to five player game. I think I played it with all the players. I don't know if I played a three player game, but I played two, four, and five, and very fun with those. Um, I highly recommend this. Now, should it have one Kenner Spiel that's Yara's? I don't know. It went up against Concordia, and much as I like Istanbul, I think Concordia is a little better, but this one's easy to teach, and this one does has a, uh, a very good visual look. When you come on the table and you look at this board, and you're like, wow, there's just so much going on, but so easy to teach and explain. Uh, and it offers a lot of different strategies in it. I mean, it's not super deep, I don't think you're going to well, you know, the gambit about getting a large merchant. And because there's dice in the game and some bonus cards, there is some randomness. Not a lot, but there is some. And I like that. It works well. If you want to go get the special abilities first, it's, it's not hard to do things. And turns move like that. And I really enjoy that. I'm going to move here. Take this action. Go. I'm going to move here. Take this action. Analysis paralysis is not a huge problem in this game. So I'm giving this game a very good recommendation. Very solid, enjoyable game, Istanbul. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.